Hiya folks! People seem to like these opinion videos. I got a lot of comments and views on the Krishnamurti one and on the Alan Watts one, so I thought I'd do another. I think I get why people like review videos, because I, I like them. Like, this is one of my all-time favorite books, The Beatles, an Illustrated Record. I found it when I was in high school, and I hadn't actually listened to a lot of the Beatles material by the time I, I found this book in the local library, but I checked it out, you know, over and over and over again and read it and read it, and it's just reviews. It's just reviews of Beatles and Beatles solo albums, and I used to even use it, like, as a palate cleanser when I was writing, when I was writing, like, uh, my uh, first few books. This was on the desk and I would when I got stuck I would just sit and read this again you know just to kinda clear the mind out and one of my favorite youtubers is almost human 56 a uh, Ralph Vieiro I believe is his name and he just does reviews of kiss albums and and I love it so I'm gonna do another opinion video but this time it's about somebody I really really like and that is Shohaku Okumura and for those of you who don't know Shohaku Okumura he is a Japanese Zen teacher who came to America, I believe, in the early 80s, then returned to Japan, then came back to America in the early 90s and has been here ever since. And currently, I believe he is in Bloomington, Indiana, has runs a little sangha over there. And he's a real interesting guy. Three books of his that I really like are Realizing Genjo Koan, Living by Vow, and the Mountains and Waters Sutra. He's got a lot of books, but I'd say these these three are my favorites. And this uh, Realizing Genjo Koan one, I'd forgotten about this, but I even wrote a blurb for the back of it. They sent me the manuscript before it was published, and I, I, I'm sure I said a lot more than this, because I really liked it. But, uh, but that's what they cut it down to, and that's what they put. So I'm a fan of Okumura Roshi. I believe he's Roshi, but he's 71 years old, so in, in terms of Japanese linguistics, me being my age and him being 71, I can call him Roshi. Uh, so, you know, that's how it goes. That's an honorific. It means I respect him. He is from the tradition of Kodo Sawaki, and Kodo Sawaki, as some of you already know, was one of the teachers of my teacher, Gudo Nishijima Roshi. But Okumura Roshi's connection with Kodo Sawaki is actually a bit more direct than Nishijima Roshi's was, because Okumura Roshi was ordained by Kosho Uchiyama, who was ordained by Kodo Sawaki, so there's a direct lineage, whereas in in the case of Nishijima Roshi, uh, he wasn't ordained by Kodo Sawaki, but by Renpo Niwa, and it's all related, but anyway, that's the, the connection there, so his teaching style is very similar to Nishijima Roshi's. What makes Okamura Roshi really important is that he's a Japanese teacher who has lived in the United States for a very long time. So he serves as a good bridge between the two cultures and as Zen is transitioning into the United States, a person like Okamura Roshi is really, really valuable, as was Shunryu Suzuki, uh, Dining Katagiri, Kobun Chino, and some others uh, were also also very valuable in that sense. People who came from that culture and, and, and lived in this one, who can kind of see both sides. And not to toot my own horn, but I think it's very fortunate that I had the opportunity to live in Japan for an extended period of time, because that also gave me a, a sense of both cultures. There's a very interesting video, and I'll put a link to it below, of Okumura Roshi talking about American Zen. And one of the things he says is that Zen and Buddhism in general have always transformed according to the new cultures that they enter. We often forget in the West, because we're a little bit myopic about this, that there's a big, big difference between Indian culture and Chinese culture, and there's a big, big difference between Chinese culture and Japanese culture. These are not the same. You know, we tend to think of them as, as a block of just Asian, but that, that's not true at all all. I've been to China a few times uh, while I was living in Japan and it was a shock how different those cultures are. The experience of having both cultures really really helps in in seeing how Zen can transform and one of the things Okumura Roshi said in that video that's something I've said often is that yes 
Zen has to transform as it comes to America, but that transformation ought to go very slowly and very carefully, and we should be really, really pay heed to what we decide to throw out. You know, you don't want to just automatically say, well, that's Japanese culture, let's get rid of that. You, you want to be very careful because it's, it's a whole package and it's very difficult to extract what's the important parts. And I think Okumura Roshi does an excellent job of this in all of his books. He's a very solid scholar of Dogen and he definitely Definitely knows his stuff. He's done some translations. In fact, I keep finding things like this. I, I've had this on my shelf for, for years, and when I consulted it during the writing of Don't Be a Jerk, that's when I first realized that this too was the work of Shohaku Okumura. It's a translation that he did, and he doesn't even get credit for it on the on the cover. It's only when you look on the inside, there's a little thing that, that, that has his name on it. I can't find it, but there's a little, there's his name appears in small print on one of the early pages of the book. So he's done a lot of work. And the other thing I like about him is that he's really, really honest there is a quote from him that I'm just going to do it from memory. I'm not going to read it out of the book. I'll let you find it. I used it in Don't Be a Jerk, though, uh, the, the actual quote, where he's talking about reincarnation and his feelings about reincarnation. And he basically, rather than giving you like the party line of, of you know what you're supposed to believe about rebirth and reincarnation he says something like uh, once I got to be over 50 years old I began to hope that reincarnation is real because I know I will never finish the work I want to do in translating and understanding Dogen's philosophy in one lifetime so I hope I will be able to continue it in another lifetime but I honestly don't know something something to that effect which I thought that's great stuff you know it's really really important to have teachers and writers who will say like this is my honest opinion and this is a guy Okumura has done plenty of Zazen you know he was part of that lineage of Kodo Sawaki and those guys are serious about their Zazen and he's been he's done monastic practice and it's it's really solid stuff uh, the other thing he does that I think is interesting is he does these, I believe they're called seshins without toys. So he does these Zen seshins, which are long form meditation retreats, where they do nothing but zazen. I mean, they get up in the morning, they eat their breakfast, they do zazen, they eat some lunch, they do zazen, <laughs> they eat some dinner, they do a little bit more zazen, then they go to bed, and that's it. There's no chanting, they don't even do work periods in these things, they just do zazen. And and I think that's real admirable. That's that's a pure sort of Zen retreat. That's a bit like what Nishimaroshis were, uh, you know, slightly less lighter than that, but it was the same idea of really dedicating yourself to Zazen and nothing else, which I like. I think that's a, a good way to do a retreat. And of course, we do these Zen and yoga retreats now in Mount Baldy, and those are nice too. Actually, there's one coming up uh, first weekend of May, so sign up for that. I'll leave a link below to sign up for our Zen and yoga retreat in Mount Baldy if you want to do that. It won't be quite as hard as an Okumura Roshi retreat, which they apparently do 14 hours of Zazen per day. We do a lot less than that. We might do uh, four or five, I think. But we still are serious about our zazen, so come to that. And anyway, that's why I like Okumura Roshi. And I highly recommend any books you find uh, by Shohaku Okumura. I would say solid bet if you want solid Zen philosophy in the lineage of Dogen, in the lineage of Kodo Sawaki. That's some good stuff. So there you go. That's my opinion on Shohaku Okumura. I don't know if I'm going to do uh, more of these or not, like I said, but uh, people seem to find them interesting, so I thought I'd knock another one out today. If you want to support my opinionated opinions, you can donate by PayPal and Patreon. The links are below. Unlike Shohaku Okumura, I'm not supported by a community of Zen practitioners or, or by the Soto Shu. I don't know if you get support from them, but, but I sure don't. Uh, I I am supported almost entirely by your donations, and I really thank you a lot for those. See you later. Bye.